Welcome to lecture 22, section 7.1 of the text Elementary Linear Algebra by Ron Larson, 7th edition, Sengage Learning. Diagonalization. This is Dr. Gilbert Iyabi. Lecture goal. Find the eigenvalues of similar matrices. Determine whether a matrix A is diagonalizable and find a matrix P such that P inverse AP is diagonal. Let's start off with the definition. An n by n matrix A is said to be diagonalizable if A is similar to a diagonal matrix, i.e. A is diagonalizable when there exists an invertible matrix P such that P inverse AP is a diagonal matrix. Example 1. Let A be this matrix defined with entries 1, 3, 0, 3, 1, 0, 0, 0, negative 2. Then we say that A is diagonalizable and that is because there is an invertible matrix P with the entries 1, 1, 0, 1, negative 1, 0, 0, 0, 1, such that P inverse times A times P gives us a diagonal matrix. So the big thing about this lecture would be to find the matrix P, such that, number one, P is invertible, number two, P inverse times A times P is a diagonal matrix. If that is the case, we say the matrix A is diagonalizable. Theorem. Similar matrices have the same eigenvalues. If A and B are similar n by n matrices, then they have the same eigenvalues. And if you have forgotten the definition of similar matrices, a and B are said to be similar if there exists an invertible matrix P such that B equals P inverse AP. So A is similar to B if there exists an invertible matrix P such that B equals P inverse AP. So if I can show that their characteristic polynomials are the same, then means the eigenvalues are the same. Remember, the eigenvalues are simply your lambdas. So can I show that the characteristic polynomial, lambda i minus b, is the same as the characteristic polynomial lambda i minus a? That would mean that a and b have the same eigenvalues. So I start off with lambda i minus b. That gives me lambda i minus p inverse a p because a is similar to b. Now, lambda is a scalar, i is the identity matrix, so I can actually hit both sides of lambda i by p inverse p, because p inverse p is just another identity matrix. So p inverse lambda i p minus p inverse a p. Now I can factorize out p inverse to the left and factorize out p to the right, and I'm left with P inverse parenthesis lambda I minus A P. By properties of determinants, this is the same as the determinant of P inverse, the determinant of lambda I minus A, the determinant of P. But recall that the determinant of P inverse is the same as 1 divided by the determinant of P. So that cancels out with the determinant of P, and I'm left with the determinant of lambda I minus A. So we have that the characteristic polynomials are the same and therefore A and B should have the same eigenvalues. So example, verify that the matrices A and D are similar. So this is A and this is D. Now recall that this matrix was produced from some invertible matrix P such that D equals P inverse AP. We still do not know how to find P. But if I can find P that is invertible, then for A to be similar to D means D equals P inverse AP. That's a diagonal matrix. 
uh, we know that the eigenvalues of a diagonal matrix are simply the entries on the main diagonal okay so the eigenvalues of a and d must be the same because uh, they are similar matrices so that's lambda equals one lambda one equals one lambda two equals two and lambda three equals three condition for diagonalization an n by n matrix a is said to be diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent eigenvectors. So very slowly we are approaching the main goal of today to find that invertible matrix P such that P inverse AP is a diagonal matrix. So we start off by saying that a is diagonalizable if and only if it has n linearly independent vectors. And how are these vectors related to our invertible matrix P? Steps for diagonalizing an n by n square matrix. So let A be an n by n square matrix. These are the steps we use to find the famous matrix P that is invertible and such that P inverse times a times p is a diagonal matrix number one find n linearly independent eigenvectors p1 p2 pn and these are vectors corresponding to the eigenvalues lambda 1 lambda 2 lambda n note if n linearly independent eigenvectors do not exist then a is not diagonalizable you stop right there and say your matrix a is not diagonalizable Step two, let P be the n by n matrix whose columns consist of these eigenvectors. P equals P1, P2, P3. In other words, your P, the big guy we are looking for, simply is generated by the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues of A. And these vectors correspond to the columns of the matrix we are interested in, the invertible matrix P. So once we get a matrix P, then D equals P inverse AP is a diagonal matrix whose eigenvalues are simply lambda 1, lambda 2, right up to lambda N. Note that the order of the eigenvectors used to form P will determine the order in which the eigenvalues appear on the main diagonal of D. We need an example at this point. Show that a matrix A is diagonalizable and then find a matrix P such that P inverse AP is diagonal. So this is our matrix A. We have to show that it is diagonalizable. And when would that be the case? We start off by looking at a characteristic polynomial of A and we end up with the eigenvalues lambda 1 equal 2 lambda 2 equals negative 2 and lambda 3 equals 3. From these eigenvalues, we can use our reduced row echelon forms to get the corresponding eigenvectors. Eigenvector 1, eigenvector 2, eigenvector 3. Observe that these are distinct and as a matter of fact, linearly independent. Therefore, our P the matrix P, the invertible matrix P would be, see this, negative 1, 0, 1. That's the first vector. Negative 1, 0, 1. 1, negative 1, 4. 1, negative 1, 4. Negative 1, 1, 1. Negative 1, 1, 1. So P would simply be this matrix such that its columns are the eigenvectors corresponding to the eigenvalues of A. And we can quickly check that P inverse times A times P is a diagonal matrix such that the entries on the main diagonal are the values of lambda 2, negative 2, 3 in this order, 2, negative 2, and 3. Let's take a theorem that blows our minds more than the first one. If an n by n matrix A has n distinct eigenvalues, remember A has to be 
an n by n matrix and it has n distinct eigenvalues then the corresponding eigenvectors are linearly independent and a is diagonalizable i.e the p we are looking for exists and the columns are the eigenvectors generated from the eigenvalues so if we are required to verify that a is diagonalizable all we have to do is check the eigenvalues of a if we have n distinct eigenvalues we stop right there and declare that a is diagonalizable if they actually want us to find the diagonal matrix then it's simply the matrix with zeros everywhere the main diagonal are the eigenvalues and if they want us to go further and find the matrix p such that p inverse times a times p is a diagonal matrix then p is simply the matrix whose columns are the eigenvectors i think we need an example at this point example four determine whether the matrix a is diagonalizable all i have to do here is find the eigenvalues of a and the eigenvalues are lambda 1 equals 1, lambda 2 equals 0, lambda 3 equals negative 3. These are three distinct eigenvalues. What is my conclusion? A is diagonalizable. What is the diagonal matrix that A is similar to? It would be a matrix with zeros everywhere and the main diagonal would have the entries 1, 0, negative 3. And if the question wanted me to go further and get the matrix P, that would be the matrix whose entries are the eigenvectors corresponding to these eigenvalues. That's beautiful. Thank you very much.